Recently, the New York Times did an article on how people have been feeling over the last few months. And it reported that they are feeling anxious, hopeful, exhausted, and angry. And we've been talking about anxious and hopeful, but we also want to talk about something that a lot of us are feeling right now, exhausted. You thought you were tired before all this. I mean, you had your job and carpool, sports and school, just to name a few things. Well, now you've got something people refer to as decision fatigue. Well, what are we going to do? And where will I work? And what will I do now? And how will we pay for this? And what will happen next? And how do I keep the kids entertained? And because of all this, something begins to happen to your soul. It just gets exhausted. One time, an Old Testament prophet named Elijah went through a very busy season where he was just work, 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 work. And God was doing all these amazing things in his life during that time. But he reached a point where he just became physically and mentally and emotionally and spiritually exhausted, and he didn't even know it. Let me read you his story. It's found in 1 Kings chapter 19. It says, Now Ahab told Jezebel everything Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. So Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah to say, May the gods deal with me, be it ever so severely, if by this time tomorrow I do not make your life like that of one of them. In other words, if you're not dead by tomorrow. Well, Elijah was afraid. And he ran for his life. When he came to Beersheba in Judah, he left his servant there. While he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness, which is not where you wanted to go. He came to a broom bush, sat down under it, and he prayed that he might die. I've had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life. I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the bush. He fell asleep. All at once, An angel touched him and said, get up and eat. And he looked around and there was by by his head was some bread baked over hot coals and a jar of water. He ate and drank and then he laid down again. And the angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, get up and eat for, and listen to this, the journey is just too much for you. So he got up and ate and he drank. Strengthened by that food, he traveled 40 days and 40 nights until he reached Horeb the mountain of God. Well, after all this, then it was time for God to speak into Elijah's life. Here's what he says. He said, there he went into a cave and he spent the night and the word of the Lord came to him. What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant. They've torn down your altars and put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left. And now they're trying to kill me too. And so he's given all these reasons to God. Then the Lord said, go out, stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord for the Lord is about to pass by. Well, then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. I want you to notice this about Elijah's story. Elijah reached a point where he was so exhausted that he wanted to die, which is actually one of the signs of extreme exhaustion. But God gave him a few gifts along the way. One of the gifts was he was able to sleep and then he ate, then he slept some more and then he ate again. And it was only then did he hear from God in that still, small voice. You see, God will never speak over the noise in our lives. And so can I encourage you to do something? Take time, and I know we, it seems like we never have time, but take time to rest. Take a nap, which a friend of mine once told me is one of the most spiritual things you can do. Get a good night's sleep and make some time for God and not just quiet for the sake of quiet, but quiet so you can connect with your heavenly father and hear his small, still voice. One of the things that leads to exhaustion is we spend a lot of energy trying to control things that ultimately we can't control. There are only two things you can control. One is your effort and the second thing is your attitude and that's it. So take the time, relax. Last year, we did a series called Busy. We'll link it in this post. I want to encourage you to check it out. But I also want to encourage you 
to share this with someone else because I would bet there's a lot of people around us who are just flat out tired. And my prayer is that God will use it to bring hope and help both into their lives and into your life.